What up, people? Today I will be talking about As, a Li As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner, my first Faulkner novel. And for my mosaic, today we have Cautious Clay. Go check him out. He's fucking awesome. And for this book, it was uh, pretty much like a mind fuck, honestly. Um, I really didn't know what to expect going in. I just kind of jumped in without any expectations or preparedness. And looking at it, most of the chapters are just a couple pages long. And it being a southern literature novel, the language I thought was going to be pretty easy. And so I didn't really think too much of it. but. Going in after reading the first 50 pages or so, I realized I heavily underestimated it. It has way more characters than I was expecting, and I had to end up just writing them all down and like figure out a family tree. I got it all right here because I didn't know. It, he doesn't explain like who's who and how are they're related. Really, you just kind of have to figure it out. And some of the relationships aren't really explained until like near the end. So, <clears throat> if you're going into this, I would definitely suggest kind of uh, getting prepared and like figuring out where they are, who's in it, how they're related to each other, and then kind of jumping in so you kind of have some something to expect because that definitely knocked me on my ass. Now I wasn't expecting it. But a little bit about William Faulkner. Uh, he was born in 1897. He died in 1962. He was around. He was 64. He's considered one of the best American uh, literature authors of the 20th century period. He's like a master of the Southern literature genre. Born in uh, Mississippi, and most of his stories take place in a fictional county. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. It's like Yoknapatuf. I don't know. Um, but it's kind of like a fictionalized version of his of his uh, hometown. And he ended up winning the Nobel Prize in the 1940s. I believe it was like 1945. I actually didn't write it down. And a little fun fact, he's actually uh, an SAE, which was the fraternity I was in, which I don't really care about now, but I thought that was a cool little thing. Um, I didn't even know anything about that. And he... Uh, was in the, he wasn't allowed to go into the military for World War I uh, because he was too short. So that's another interesting fact. But uh, he's mainly really stream of consciousness influenced, really James Joyce influenced, um, which I read one of his books. And uh, it was kind of, it was, it was tough to get through as well, but it was good. <clears throat> but uh, a little bit about the novel. So it takes place... So it starts out with uh, the mother of the family on her deathbed, and one of the sons, Cash, the oldest, is building <clears throat> the coffin, and the two other sons, Jewel and Darl, go to get um, go on a trip for their uh, to get three dollars. They're very determined on going on this last trip to town to get three dollars <throat> so they can make some more money before they take this trip the mother's a uh, dying wish is to be mar uh, to be buried in Jefferson which is where she's from with her um, personal family like that she grew up with and so <clears throat> so their main goal of the novel is transporting her body from where they're at I can't really think of the their hometown or where they're from right now to Jefferson and it's a uh, couple day um couple day what's the word trip couple day trip um but they end up you know coming across some conflicts and uh one of them being is a broken bridge across a river and uh <clears throat> and so a lot of interesting things happen it has a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of layers with it having such simple language um, I've realized that Faulkner is a master of dialogue. I called it beat around the bush dialogue because 
they're all saying something without saying it. And I, and I realize that's a big Southern thing. Me, and I'm from Oklahoma, so I'm kind of like Midwestern and Southern mixture of both. But like, so I really connected with that. Everyone was saying something without saying it. And so I didn't really pick up on that at first and, until I really started digging in. And there's just so many different levels, even though they're like using very simple language and simple dialogue and you wouldn't expect these people to be, I mean, very smart just to be, uh, you know, I mean, because that's just what people think of Southern people usually. <clears throat> but uh, especially around this time and people, country folk. Uh, and so <clears throat> it was really interesting for me to see like how honestly just a master that Faulkner is at writing and it made me frustrated that someone was so good at writing uh, around that time. I mean, he was pub he published this book in 1930, which was, you know, like the depression started in 1929, so I wouldn't argue that was the best time to publish something and I'm, it just kind of blew my mind that someone was writing something like this around that time. Um, but anyways, moving on. So, some of my, I already mentioned one of my likes, some of my likes and, likes and dislikes of the book was uh, Faulkner is just a, a master of dialogue, a master of character, master of stream of consciousness. Each chapter is only a couple pages long, but it's a different character for each chapter. And so, <clears throat> I had a hard time, because <laughs> they changed so quickly, I was having a hard time, like, remembering what I they were talking about whenever they were talking in first person. I'm like, wait, which character is this? So I really, so I started listening to the uh, audiobook, which I would suggest you can, um, if you have a library card, you can download this app called Outlook and uh, check out audiobooks just like you check out normal books. Sometimes you have to wait depending on how popular they are. But so I ended up doing that, and because they had different voice actors and stuff for each character, so it kind of helped me, um, you know, uh, visualize the characters and, and everything like that. Another thing that I liked was just the levels, like I mentioned, there's just so many different literary levels, just like so many different, so much symbolism, so much going on that like, if you didn't look into in, into this at all and just read it by yourself, you would have to read it at least twice, I think. Um, and even if you did look into anything, you could, this is just has a lot of reread value. I feel like it's one of those books that every time you read it, you find something new. Um, and some of my dislikes were, uh, which I think he did this on purpose a lot of the times, is like he worked with your confusion. Like you weren't really supposed to know what was going on in some parts. And I just hate that, honestly. It really bugs me that when I can't figure out what's going on or, or don't understand something. But uh, I think that was his purpose on some of it where it wasn't supposed to make sense then. And it wasn't even supposed to make sense later. And then, But it eventually makes sense uh, at the very end or something like that. And it's just a very easy book to quit honestly it's a, it's not an easy read um like I, I put it down i probably read it in like 30 to 50 page spurts and then like really sat on it and thought about it even though it's a only 260 pages it's it's heavy for sure and it's not <laughs> and it's not a happy read either if i, I really like depressing literature so i mean it kind of went up right up right up my alley so uh but if if you're looking for something happy, uh, I wouldn't pick this up. But uh, And then I had a couple things that were on the teeter of likes and dislikes. And the difficulty being one of those. Uh, I liked how difficult it was because it, it does make it a very satisfying read after you finish it and you like feel like you actually understand what he was doing and, and everything. <clears throat> but, I mean, that's another dislike as well. It was, it was difficult. I, I kind of wanted to put it down at some points and try something else but uh but also wanting to know what happens you really like these these characters are so real they they feel like real people and you really like each one of them is their own person and and you really feel that you, you feel like you're really there and uh and yeah i don't know if i'm a fan of stream of consciousness or not honestly uh i like it at some points and i don't at others there's a what is it Notes from the Underground is probably my favorite. 
uh, stream of consciousness book that I've read, uh, and I plan on doing one of those uh, or a video uh, on that as well. But uh, just to read some quotes for you to give you a sense of uh, of what his writing is like. One. Alrighty. So I took ants, and when I knew that I had cash. I knew that living was terrible, and this was the answer to it. That was when I learned that words are no good, that words don't ever fit even when you are trying to say it, that words don't ever fit even what they are trying to say it. When he was born, I knew that motherhood was invented by someone who, who had to have a word for it because the, the ones that had the children didn't care whether there was a word for it or not. So, so as you can see, he he writes in the southern dialect. So some of it is hard to read, and it's kind of hard to understand because he spells it how they speak it, which is another reason I decided to follow along with the audiobook after a while. Which I mean, me being from the south and the Midwest, I kind of uh, picked up on a lot of it. But anybody probably from the north, the U.S. have more difficulty. But I still use the uh, use the audiobook and then for uh, I'm not doing three quotes I'm just gonna do two on this one uh, life wasn't made easy on folks they wouldn't ever have any reason to be good and die look here I said you get that notion out of your head the Lord gave you what you have even if he did use the devil to do it you let him take it away from you you let him take it away from you if that if that's his will to do so. You go on back to Leif and you and him take that ten dollars and get married with it. Um, but yeah, so there's a bunch of, obviously a bunch of uh, religious values, a lot of religious symbolism uh, being from the south. Um, and a lot of, and it's really interesting to see people questioning the religion at this point. And like that wasn't really a thing to do, especially like something populous as this back then people were didn't question religion and you know it's interesting to see that back in 1930 of like the type of doubts people had back then and how they believed in God and everyone kind of had a different different belief and you know, just in a, in a in a different way understanding how he works and everything but, <clears throat> but yeah so this video is getting a little longer than I was expecting already um, but yeah, if you're interested in uh, depressing Southern literature and uh, haven't ever read Faulkner, I definitely suggest picking this up. Um, I'll probably reread this eventually, just because I have something to expect by now. And let me just tell you, it has an ending that you wouldn't expect. So, thanks for listening.